Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Heart Softeners by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari. My dear respected elders, brothers and sisters and the viewers of the Daily Reminder Network, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلي وسلم على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد بن عبد الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم أما بعد All praise and thanks be to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is our creator, sustainer, nourisher, protector and curer. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower his choicest of blessings and salutations upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family members, his companions and all those who tread upon his path with utmost sincerity until the day of Qiyamah. Inshallah ta'ala, for the purposes of barakah and reflection, we will start off Tonight's heart softener with a recitation from the Noble Quran. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan r-rajim Wasiqa al-lazina kafaru ila jahannam zumaram Hatta أبوابها وقال لهم خزنتها وقال لهم خزنتها ألم يأتكم رسل منكم يتلون يتلون عليكم آيات ربكم وينذرونكم لقاء كلمة العذاب على الكافرين قيل ادخلوا أبواب جهنم خالدين فيها فبئس مثوى المتكبرين إن شاء الله تعالى for tonight's heart softener we will be touching on Jahannam, hellfire. To even think of touching on this topic, you know, sends shudders down one's spine. But inevitably, we have to touch on it so that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from this creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also so that we stay away from all those things that transgress the limits set by our powerful maker resulting in us being protected from the blazing fire of Jahannam and also resulting in us being admitted entry into the beautiful gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from Jahannam and may Allah the Almighty grant us all access into Jannah. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, it starts off with the Qabr as that is the first station that you and I are going to encounter from the Akhirah in terms of the life of the hereafter. When a person is put into the Qabr, according to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when a righteous person, when a righteous individual is laid in, laid in his Qabr, in his grave, you know what happens? A window opens up. You know, this is after the questioning and all that takes place. A question, the questioning in the sense, the questioning of the grave. After the questioning takes place, a window is open. When a righteous person is laid in his grave, a window to Jahannam is open. Allahu Akbar. When a righteous person is laid in his grave, a window to Jahannam, to hellfire, is opened. And then it is said unto that individual, if you had been the opposite of righteous, along the lines of these words, if you had been a bad person, if you had been an evil person, this is where you would have ended up, Allahu Akbar. And afterwards that window will be shut and then a window towards Jannah, towards paradise will open out. And that individual will start um, smelling the fragrance of Jannah and he will be witnessing the beautiful scenes of Jannah and then he will cry out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will pray Ya Allah 
establish the hour now. In other words, commence the day of judgment now, now, because he'll be so impatient to enter Jannah. Allahu Akbar. On the other hand, when an evil person is laid in his qabr, when an evil person is laid in the grave, a garden, a window to, the, to Jannah will be opened out. When an evil person is laid in his grave, a window to Jannah, to paradise will be opened up and it will be said to him, if only you had been a righteous person, if only you had been a righteous person, this is where you would have ended up in. But nay, this is not for you and that window will be slammed shut and then the window to Jahannam, to the blazing fire of hell will be opened up and he will start witnessing the scary and horrible scenes of Jahannam and he will pray to Allah, Ya Allah, Allah, do not commence the day of judgment. He will cry out out of fear because he would not want to witness Jahannam, nor would he want to enter Jahannam. So from this, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, scholars, rahimahumullah, they state that the minute an individual dies, he will know where he is going to, whether he is going to Jahannam or whether he is going to Jannah. Because of the signs he will encounter in the Qabr. Because if he passes through the Qabr smoothly, the grave smoothly, and then afterwards all of the encounters will be easy, inshaAllah ta'ala. And some other scholars, rahimahumullah, also state that the, that, that individual will know whether he is successful or not in the way the Malakul Mouth comes and takes his soul. If the Malakul Mouth, if the angel of death takes his soul in a beautiful manner, then Alhamdulillah, everything is going to be peaceful for him. But on the other hand, if Malakul Mouth comes and plucks his soul out in a harsh manner, then he would know that destruct, destruction is upon him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. And may Allah the Almighty bless us all with beautiful deaths, inshaAllah ta'ala. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, after the Qabr, this man will now encounter the questioning. He will be on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will question this individual. And during day, the day of Qiyamah, what will happen is during the day of Qiyamah, at that time when the questioning is taking place, Jahannam will be brought. Jahannam will be brought. Hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that Jahannam will be dragged and brought to the place of questioning. And how will Jahannam be brought? 70,000 ropes or 70,000 bridles will be put around Jahannam and Jahannam will be dragged by the angels. Each bridle, each rope will be dragged by 70,000 angels. There will be 70,000 ropes and each rope will be dragged by 70,000 angels. And Jahannam will be alive. It will be roaring, it will be crackling and it will be screaming. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all and Jahannam will be brought. It will be such a frightful scene to witness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. And the ayat I recited in the beginning, kafaru ila jahannam zumara. The ones who rejected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be driven to Jahannam in throngs and in groups. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all until they reach Jahannam and the keepers of Jahannam will say unto them, and who are the keepers of Jahannam? There are special angels appointed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 19 in number. They will be the keepers of Jahannam and they will cry out, Alam yatikum rusulum minkum yatluna alaykum ayati rabbikum. Did there not come to your messengers who used to recite the verses of your Lord? And did they not warn you of this day, of this meeting, of this meeting of yours? Allahu Akbar. And then they will reply, the denizens of Jahannam will reply, They will say, of course, but the word of punishment has been decreed on the kuffar, on the ones who rejected the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then it will be said to them, It will be said unto them, enter 
the doors of Jahannam, khalidina fiha, you will abide or enter the doors of Jahannam and remain therein for in, for, forever, Allahu Akbar. They will remain there forever, the kuffar. Such a frightful scene, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. And then once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was seated with the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi wa jama'een, hadith is in Muslim, suddenly they hear a loud crash. They hear a loud crash. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked the Sahaba, Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi wa jama'een, do you all know what that crash is? To which they reply, Allah wa rasooluhu a'lam. Allah and his messenger know best. And then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam clarifies, Rasulullah sadiq al masduq wa ma yantiqu anil hawa. He does not speak out of his own desires. In huwa illa wahyu yuha. Whatever he says is out of divine revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that it was a rock which was flung into Jahannam and it was dropping for 70 years and it just now reached the bottom of Jahannam. And 70 years in the sense, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we do not know whether Rasulullah was meaning 70 years of our time or the time of the hereafter. In other words, each day is equal to 50,000 years of our time. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. Talking about the depth of Jahannam, in terms of Jahannam, we would say Darakat. The levels of Jahannam are known as Darakat. But the levels of Jannah are known as Darajat. Darajat because it goes up one after the other. Jahannam, Darakat, it keeps going down, level, levels down, Allahu Akbar. You keep going into the bowels of Jahannam. You keep go, going into the bowels of hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. And the least punishment inflicted on a person in Jahannam. In other words, that, what we mean is he will be on the highest level in Jahannam because the lower you go, the severe the punishment is. Indeed, the hypocrites, the munafiqun, will be in the lowest parts of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all and cleanse our hearts from hypocrisy. The least punishment inflicted on a, on, a, on a denizen from Jahannam will be that he would have to have a smoldering ember under the arcs of his feet and due to the heat. And in another report, it has been said that he would have to wear shoes made of the fire of Jahannam. And because of the heat, his brain would begin to boil. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, talking about the punishments and the horrors of Jahannam, there will be hot, extremely hot wind blow, winds blowing all over the place. Those winds are known as Samoon. And there will be super hot, super hot scalding water which will be given to the denizens of Jahannam, known as Hamim. And you know what the food of the people of Jahannam will be? A zakum. Allahu Akbar. Inna shajarat al zakum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it in the Noble Quran. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that in regard to zakum, even if one drop of that tree, zakum, if it were to be put on the face of this earth, all of humanity would perish and also the sustenance of humanity would perish. It is so poisonous and so toxic. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. That will be the food of the people of Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. I finally, I leave you all with a narration where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that Jahannam consumes itself. Allahu Akbar. The narration goes along the lines of these words. Jahannam consumes itself. Jahannam once cried out to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, the narration goes along the lines of these words. The hadith is in Bukhari, if I'm not mistaken, or in Muslim, one of the two anyway. Where Jahannam cries out, Ya Allah, part of me is consuming part of me. Because as we know, the fire of Jahannam is 70,000 times more in fiery, in, in, in terms of its uh, heat, than the fire of this world. And the fire of Jahannam is not a bright glowing fire. Nay, it is a pitch black fire. Because it was kindled by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a thousand years until it became rosy red. And then it was kindled again for an another thousand years until it became sparkling white and then it was kindled another thousand years until it became pitch black so if you think of Jahannam don't think of a blazing glowing fire nay just even if you were to imagine a petrol bunker bursting up in flames 
Jahannam is worse than that because it will be pitch black flames. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all. And the fire will be so severe. Fire is such a scary thing. And that is why a person who burns to death is known, is, is considered a shaheed. If he naturally, in the sense, without his own will, if he burns to death, he is considered a shaheed because fire is such a painful thing. Allahu Akbar. So coming back to the hadith I was mentioning, the, the, the fire of Jahannam cries out to Allah, Ya Allah, part of me is consuming part of my, me, me in the sense, I, Jahannam is being destroyed from within because of the destructive nature of Jahannam, of the fire of Jahannam, it destroys part of it. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission for Jahannam to exhale twice. To exhale twice. Once in summer and once in winter. And that's why Rasulullah went on to say, that's why you feel extreme heat in summer and you feel extreme coolness or coldness in winter. These are the two exhalations of Jahannam. Once in summer and once in winter. Rasulullah who does not speak out of his own desires, divine revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He states that once in summer and once in winter. And from this scholars rahimahumullah derive that the punishments in Jahannam are not only going to be hot, but there will be also extremely cold punishments. Some parts of Jahannam will be freezing cold. Allahu Akbar. Because as we know, we cannot withstand freezing cold too, just as how we cannot bear severe heat. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us all from the punishments of Jahannam. And may Allah the Almighty forgive our sins. May He the Almighty protect us from Jahannam and grant us entry into Jannah. May He accept all of our good deeds and may he unite us in the gardens of Jannah just as how he united us here tonight with our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa akhir da'waya and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen jazakumullahu khair Donate now go to www.thedailyreminder.org slash donate and stay updated by joining our network's social links